Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to learn about centripetal acceleration. All right, so as a recap, we know that things spin around in a circle, and when that happens, there is a tangential velocity that is tangent to the circle, and it looks kind of like this. All right, so up on the, the board, you see we have a object that spins around in a circle counterclockwise, and if that were to happen, this tangential velocity will always be pointing up and out tangentially to the outer rim of the circle. Now, um, if the object were to go from point A to point B, the tangential velocity would follow uh, along the path of the circle. Okay? Now, at the very beginning of the year, we learned that one of the definitions of acceleration is the change of velocity or a change in the object's uh, direction. Okay? Now, according to this picture, this object used to be going straight up and down. Uh, but after some time has passed, it is now going up and to the left. Now, I don't know about you, but according to the definition of acceleration, that must mean that this object experienced a acceleration. Now, what kind of acceleration might it be? Uh, what we call that acceleration in physics is the centripetal acceleration. And the equation for centripetal acceleration is something that we can derive using uh, a little bit of math. So hang on tight. To start us off, we need to have a couple of things in mind. First, object went from point one to point two. And when that happened, it had a change in theta right there. We are also assuming that that theta is extremely tiny. Okay? For the sake of us being able to see it uh, and for me to be able to draw it, I drew that theta kind of large. So let's go with the definition of acceleration that we are used to. We learned in quarter one, that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. So let's give our velocity vectors a, a label. I'm going to call this velocity, velocity one. I'm going to call this velocity vector, velocity two. So now I can rewrite this equation as such. The acceleration is equal to the final velocity, v2, minus the initial velocity, v1, over a change in time. Now, velocities uh, are vectors. And what we can do with vectors is we can add and subtract them using the tip-to-tail method. And so we're going to try that now. We have v2 here, and we have v1 here. We want to subtract v1 from v2. And the easiest way to do that is what we call the tip-to-tail method. Okay? We're going to follow the ordering of the equation v2 minus v1. So I'm going to draw v2 uh, over here. All right, so that's v2. And we're going to subtract v1 from v2. So v1 used to be straight up vertical, but we're subtracting from it. So we're going to make it go straight down vertical. And we take the shortest distance from point one to point two. And that is what we call our change in velocity. That's our delta v. Now, through the power of trigonometry and geometry, I am here to tell you that this angle here is the same exact angle here. Now, because those two are the same angle, we can use a little bit of our similar triangle theorems. Okay? All right. So before we go into that, make sure you have all of this uh, sketched down, and we're going to prove uh, that there is, in fact, an acceleration. One of the proofs of triangles is that if you have Two, if you had the same angle and you had similar sides, we can have a ratio, all right? So let's define what the ratio is. We know that this has the same theta, and we have radius here and radius here. But you might be thinking to yourself, Mr. Lee, uh, that doesn't look like a triangle. That kind of looks like a slice of the pie. Now, remember what we started off with. We started off with saying that this theta is extremely tiny. And if that theta is extremely tiny, then the distance from here to here we are claiming it's a straight line. And the reason why we're claiming that it's a straight line is one, it makes our life easier, but because the arc length is so small, we are assuming that it is in fact a straight line, okay? So we have a triangle here made with the radii, and we have a triangle here made with the change in velocity. Now, we can use our similar triangle theorems. We can say that base one divided by base two is equal to side one divided by side two. So what that gives us is a proof that we want to use in geometry with triangles. All right, so base one, we can write it as delta v, or the change in velocity, right there. So base two is on the other side, or the, on the other triangle. 
and that is the change in distance. That's the change in distance from here to here. And we call that delta x, or the change in position. And that is equal to side 1, v, divided by side 2, r. All right, we're getting super close to the end. So we need to do a little bit of algebraic tricks with our knowledge of physics in order to figure out what to what can we put in this denominator here to make our lives easier? So we know that delta x can be found in the velocity equation. The velocity equation is the change in position over the change in time is equal to the velocity. Delta x, delta x. Let's isolate that variable. So we can say that delta x is equal to v times the change in time. So I'm going to replace this delta x with that newfound equation. All right, now at this moment, hidden in this equation is the equation for acceleration. Let's remind ourselves what the acceleration of equation is, acceleration is. Taking a look up here, we know that acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So do you see the acceleration equation here? I sure do. And I circled it in red. So I'm going to rewrite this equation as acceleration divided by the velocity is equal to the velocity divided by the radius. All right, now that kind of looks a, a little bit messy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I can multiply both sides the, by velocity in order to get rid of the velocity in the denominator. Now when I do that, I get the acceleration is equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call the centripetal acceleration, A sub C. Good job!